today's video, we'll be showcasing the most incredible battleships of all time. Some that have been immortalized in modern-day museums, one that's proved its worthiness in the service of war, and a living legend that will still stand for years to come, whether in peace or war. Number 10. Giulio Cesar, which I'm pretty sure I mispronounced there. Giulio Cesar, named after one of the greatest military leaders of all time, Julius Caesar, served in the Italian Royal Navy for both world wars. Built during the pre-World War I era of 1914 to 1918, when the race for making the best warships was ongoing, it set sail on record time by June 24, 1910. It was a Comte de Cavour class dreadnought warship specifically made for this time. It was armed with 13 main battery guns and 5 turrets, which at the time was considered to be an odd combo. In classic Italian fashion though, it also kept style as an important factor in designing the ship as a whole, although this was not cared for by other dreadnoughts. In the popular modern-day video game called World of Warships, which we're not sponsored by, but uh, hit us up, world. We love you. This ship is in the game and keeps true to the original, wherein its stylishness is maintained in the way that most other warships would underestimate its strength and durability. The helm itself is not encased in thick steel, but rather that of a Roman Centurion. It's not as strong as steel, but it provides unhindered movement and excellent protection from heat. Even highly explosive shells prove to be no match as it's very resistant to heavy explosions and fire. However, the Caesar did not have any active missions during World War I, and only made one attack on the Greek island of Corfu when there were Italian killings in the country. By 1928, it was then renovated to be used as an artillery training ship. Back over in World War II, though, the ship was badly damaged by the HMS War Spite that set the world record for naval gunnery against a moving target at well over 24,000 meters. Before the Caesar could breathe its last, it managed to send back an attack that straddled two British warships, causing immense splinter damage on both ships. Number 9. Bismarck. Having a Sabaton song named after you must mean something. Bismarck, the first of two Bismarck-class warships, was built for Germany's Kriegsmarine, the Nazi War Navy. Despite being massive at over 52,000 tons, it still had decently fast speeds at 30 knots. It was Germany's largest warship and it had displaced more than any other European battleship thus far. This made the Bismarck undoubtedly the most famous warship of World War II history. Again, the Sabaton song kind of coming into here. This was a time when people believed that this ship was the incarnation of the idea that only massive steel giants with powerful guns and thick armor could rule the Seven Seas. On August 24, 1940, they held a grand ceremony to mark the occasion at which the Bismarck was finally ready to enter service. On the same night, the British took the chance to ambush them with an air raid. However, the Bismarck didn't even take any significant damage, causing fear and panic from its enemies. Because of this, the Allied nations were pressured into releasing more ships and destroyers to quickly intercept this monster. The British battlecruiser Hood quickly engaged the Bismarck, but was utterly destroyed in the process. This gave Bismarck time to escape into the ocean and quickly head for France. But the Allied powers took this as an emergency concern, sending a torpedo to cripple the steering gear. This still wasn't enough to destroy the ship, and so through the entire night, several battleships arrived to destroy the Bismarck. On the morning after hours of bombarding, the Bismarck was finally incapacitated and sank to the bottom of the ocean. Today, the Bismarck can be seen lying upright under the ocean at a depth of more than 4,500 meters. Number 8. HMS Barham. HMS Barham was under the Queen Elizabeth class of battleships, the third RN warship to bear this name and served its position as a Grand Fleet. It was the flagship of the 5th Squadron and collided numerous times with its sister ship, the Warspite. It wasn't the fastest, and neither was it the most armored, and definitely not the most powerful. However, what made this warship shine was the people who served in it. Over the several battles done, it became the most accurate warship of all in the British Royal Fleet as it almost always hit its targets head on. Due to its issues and durability, it went through several repairs commissions and was refitted to show off new anti-aircraft defenses. The changes didn't stop there though, as so many improvements were done to make this a formidable warship. Though unlike its sister ships, the improvements were minor as they would hinder the ship's overall accuracy. In 1941, HSM Barham was steaming to cover an attack on Italian convoys. Just then, the worst had come as a surprise attack of three torpedoes from a German submarine U-331. These torpedoes were released from 750 yards away and offered no time for evasive action. The HMS continued to fight and rush ashore to the port, but the magazines on the firearms aboard had exploded. The blast was incredibly caught on camera by cameraman John Turner, who was on another warship nearby. In order to hide this news from Germans, the British kept this a secret and censored it from all news in order to keep the war morale high. 
Over 800 lives were lost during the explosion, and a memorial stands for the families who never knew they had lost their loved ones until after the war. Number 7. Richelieu the Richelieu was the last and fastest warship that was a part of the battleship class of the same name for the French Navy. These were designed to combat and counter the Italian battleships, featuring a main battery of eight 380mm guns and quadruple turrets. This warship was known to be the only one able to reload guns on whatever angular position, unlike other ships that required a specific angle. This fixed the issue of time loss whenever reloading was happening, and this feature was commended by other allies because of the complexity of the reloading system. The Richelieu was scaled up to accommodate a much more powerful battery with increased armor to protect them from guns of the same caliber. She was laid down in 1935 and launched in 1939, just before the outbreak of World War II in Europe. It was a superstar when it arrived in the U.S. for repair and rework. French soldiers who had arrived were cheered loudly by the crowds and were pleasantly surprised at the free American refreshments they had received. This was during a time when the French Navy was not given enough leverage to produce as many warships as the U.S. or the U.K., so they were forced to create the most flexible and effective class of warships. Number 6. Giorgio Zavaroff Ships are rarely given the privilege of being the flagship for an entire navy for a very long time, and to have massive historical relevance was even rarer. But for the Giorgio Zavaroff of Greece, it is the ideal example of such a rare ship. Initially a Pisa-class armored cruiser, the incomplete ship was bought by Greece from Italy and was funded generously for repair and improvements. It was outfitted with parts from different countries in order to get the best of equipment and quality as possible. This ship would then be known as the most powerful ship in the Aegean Sea once finally commissioned. In the Balkan War of 1912, the Yorgos Zavarov single-handedly forced Ottoman fleets to retreat from battle two times on separate occasions. In World War I, it was borrowed by the French before the Greece and decided to join the war. However, during World War II, Greece decided to become neutral in the conflict. Because the invasions were done by land, the warship took little to no part in the fight as well. When the German army broke through their borders, the Greek army began to collapse. The crew and the Georgos Zavarov were ordered to destroy the ship to prevent it from being captured, but the crew did what any other country refused to do, and they disobeyed the order. They sailed for Alexandria when Greece had fallen and used itself as a convoy to escort Greek people in and out of the country. Today, the warship is docked in Athens as a museum, honoring not only its life as a ship, but as a savior that rescued lives caught in the war. Number 5. Yamato You don't mess around with Japan, and for good reason, too. For a country that doesn't actually allow the selling of guns and other armalities to the public, Japan sure is secure in its army, especially in its naval fleet. One of the most iconic battleships to ever set sail across Japanese waters and the Pacific in general is the Yamato Battleship. At one point, the Yamato was actually called the strongest battleship ever to be built. She and her sister ship, Musashi, were the heaviest and most powerfully armed battleships ever constructed. They displaced nearly 72,000 tons at full load and were armed with nine Type 94 main guns, which were the largest guns ever mounted on a warship at the time. Yamato was the lead ship of her class of battleships built for the Imperial Japanese Navy shortly before World War II. Named after the ancient Japanese Yamato province, Yamato was designed to counter the numerically superior battleship fleet of the U.S., Japan's main rival in the Pacific. She was laid down in 1937 and was formally commissioned a week after the Pearl Harbor attack in late 1941. Throughout the following year, she served as a flagship of the Combined Fleet, and in June 1942, Admiral Soroku Yamamoto directed the fleet from her bridge during the Battle of Midway, a disastrous defeat for Japan. The Yamato, though heavily plated, failed to repel the torpedo power of the U.S. fleets, leading to her untimely end, capsized around the waters of Kyushu. Today, decades after the war, Yamato continues to be memorialized in various forms by the Japanese. A post-war remembrance of the lives lost during the epic battle, Yamoto became a symbol of heroism after their country's defeat in the war. Number 4. The USS Zumwalt The USS Zumwalt is best known for its ability to camouflage. Or, you know, its abilities in camouflage. This ship is all about stealth, built to blend in and hide naval strength rather than display it downright. The USS Zumwalt is a uniquely built ship, having a radar cross-section similar to a fishing boat despite her large size, making her almost invisible to the naked eye radar-wise. Though we call her a warship for her practical use out at sea, the USS Zumwalt is better known as a guided missile destroyer. This is a destroyer designed to launch guided missiles to aircrafts during attacks. 
There were a number of delays of the makings of this ship, and in July 2008, General Dynamics was set with a construction timetable to deliver the Zumwalt warship in April 2013, with a March 2015 target date for Zumwalt to meet her initial operating capability. Unfortunately, the planned completion and delivery of the vessel was delayed. The first section of the ship was later laid down in the slipway at Bath Iron Works on November 2011, by which point fabrication of the ship was over 60% complete. The naming ceremony was planned for October 19, 2013, but was canceled due to the U.S. federal government shutdown in 2013. The vessel was finally launched on October 29, 2013. Zumwalt's first commanding officer was Captain James A. Kirk, but she was named after Elmo Russell Zumwalt Jr., an American naval officer who was the youngest man to serve as the chief of naval operations. Fun fact, William Shatner, who played the Star Trek role of Captain James Kirk, wrote a letter of support to Zumwalt's crew in April 2014 as ship Captain Kirk attracted some media attention when he was first named Captain. This is of course due to the similarity of the two names there. On December 7, 2015, the ship departed Bath Iron Works for sea trials to allow the Navy and contractors to operate the vessel under rigorous conditions to determine whether Zumwalt was ready to join the fleet as an actively commissioned warship. The ship is still in the works at the moment, but hey, hopefully we'll see more of it in the future. Number 3. Minas Gerais Minas Gerais was the first South American dreadnought under Brazil as a response to the brewing rivalry between Chile and Argentina. While the two other countries were busy with their local rivalry, Brazil started to modernize and upgrade its own after relying on obsolete 1880s ironclads. It was a very bold move for the aging Brazilian Navy that's been weakened by neglect and caused an immense sensation after being revealed to the press worldwide. During the time when Brazil made the purchase, the country was the third in the world to order a ship that was capable of sinking anything that floated at that time, and it caused a huge controversy not only in South America, but the entire friggin' world. On paper, they were quite superior to both the Dreadnought and South Carolina, the very peak of power and prestige that the nation could own at the time. Minas Gerais had caused a stir worldwide and triggered a new naval arms race that was quite unique in history. The battleship was somewhat modernized and has served during both World War II and the early days of the Cold War as the pride of their nation. The Minas Gerais was not only the largest and mightiest in the world on paper during this time, it actually innovated how weapons were used aboard warships by being the first to use super-firing turrets. However, by the standards of the Royal Navy, Minas Gerais was very behind. By the time they wished to modernize the ship, it was already in such terrible condition that it sank on its way to Great Britain. Number 2. Oktyabrskaya Revolucia Ignoring modern events at the moment, Russia is known for its active military prowess all over the world. They're known for their armed forces, their firepower, and their aerial and naval fleets, so it's not surprising that they landed a spot in the list of greatest battleships of all time. Known as the October Revolution when translated, it was previously known as the Gangut of the Gangut class dreadnought of the Imperial Russian Navy before World War I. She is the last of her class and was named after the Russian victory over the Swedish Navy in the Battle of Gangut in 1714. She was a whopping 594 feet long with a beam of 88 feet and a draft of 29.5 feet, and also 1.61 feet more than how it was originally designed. Revolutia was completed during winter in 1914 to 1915, but was not ready for combat until mid-1915. Her role was to defend the Gulf of Finland from the Germans who never dared to enter, and thus has spent her time training and providing cover for mine-laying operations. Her most notable service was during June 1941, when the Germans invaded the Soviet Union. They opened fire on troop positions of the German 18th Army on from the channel between Leningrad and Kronstadt, but she was badly damaged on September 21st by three bombs hit on her by the bow that knocked out two turrets. Gangut supported Soviet forces during the siege of Leningrad, the Leningrad Novgorod Offensive in January 1944, and the Vyborg Petrozavodsk Offensive in June 1944. On the 22nd of July 1944, she was awarded the Order of the Red Banner, when after for her service of the troops. The Gangut had a pretty straightforward life, but that just goes to show how dedicated the Russians were to their military. Number 1. USS Alabama The USS Alabama BB-60 is a World War II-era battleship, and it was the fifth ship named after the state of Alabama. It was better known for helping Japanese-held islands in the Pacific from 1943 to 1945, and has earned numerous citations and battle stars. It is now the centerpiece of the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park and is one of the state's most visited attractions. 
An $80 million project was brought about to construct this warship and was expected to be completed within 40 months. It took over 3,000 men and women working 24 hours a day for 30 months to finish, but it's now considered the largest ship to ever be built in Portsmouth, weighing over 45,000 tons. Despite its bulky design, the vessel's advanced design enabled it to move at 28 knots, which was considerably fast with its sheer size. The Alabama is the only American ship to ever be honored by the former Soviet Union for protecting the Russian fleet during World War II. However, the ship's greatest moment would be when it arrived in the Battle of the Philippine Sea during the Japanese invasion of the Pacific. The Alabama's impressive radar managed to spot all aerial enemies at a 190-mile distance, immobilizing more than 500 Japanese aircrafts. Desperation led many other Japanese aerial fleets to go into kamikaze or suicide flights during the later half of the war. In the spring of 1962, the U.S. Navy announced their plans to finally scrap this famed vessel, but the citizens of Alabama were quick to respond and ask for this vessel to dock permanently in the bay to pay respects to all the Alabamians who died to defend the country. The vessel, in turn, was given to the state of Alabama, and they created the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park by 1965. See you all next time!